Hi, my name's Rodney Mott. Welcome to Clay Talks. Today we're gonna throw a sectional pot for you off the potter's wheel. And I have two um, of my good students helping me today. Andrew and Jan will be in the background throwing some pots as well. When we throw, we balance speed, pressure, and wetness. There are different types of wheels. Andrew's throwing on a electric wheel as I am, and Jan is throwing on a kick wheel. The first shape that we're gonna throw today is the foot, or the base of our larger sectional pot. So we're gonna throw three forms, putting them together to make a larger form. A lot of potters are able to throw a smaller pot, but more challenging and they are not able to throw a larger pot. So if we cut it down to size and we throw three parts, putting them together, they'll accomplish what they want to. Made my well hole with my thumbs and pushed my fingers all the way down to the metal because I do not need a base on this first fluted foot part. Pushing my base all the way out and then thinning the walls and moving the clay up three times. I started my throwing in 1972 back in Los Altos in high school when I was a freshman. Got introduced to the potter's wheel. At that time in the Bay Area, pottery was huge and there were all kinds of heroes making face mugs and planters and casseroles and teapots. Up and down the coast there would be handmade pottery stores and people really collected it. Those times have changed, especially in California. But every high school and every college still has a substantial pottery where people are learning to throw pots still. It's such an important part of our culture. When I'm happy with the fluted base, I'll take a rib, compress the walls, then I'm ready to take that part off and move on to the second form. So that's the base. I use a simple pair of calipers to measure the distance, the width, so that when I make the next part, it'll match up. There's a lot of repetition involved in the craft of making pottery. So we go through these steps well, and that's how we create a, um, a satisfying piece of work. This centering is a very important start, foundation. If you get this into the middle of the wheel and all the molecules lined up, it'll spin up for you easier, it'll thin out for you easier. Again, when I touch the clay, it's with the intention of moving the clay, not riding the clay. I'm not putting my hands on it to feel it go around. I'm touching it so that I can move it. The clay doesn't want to sit here and get saturated for 10 or 15 minutes. It only wants about three to five minutes for you to work on it. So you have to be fairly deliberate. This middle section needs a base. So when I'm ready to go in and push down to where about a quarter of an inch to the bottom, leaving a nice little base there. Pull out with my fingertips to where that's gonna measure up. One of the most beautiful things about my studio and where I work is I'm surrounded with wildlife. I have sheep and horses and cows and you know I'm working in such a natural environment and I'm working with such a natural material. It's a nice balance there. That was my first pull. Bringing up the clay for my second pull. 
And again, this is the middle or the, the belly of my piece. Now I'm going to use my rib again to compress the walls, eliminate the throwing lines. That way it'll be easier for me to connect all of the three parts in just a second to form the larger vase. Put that off to the side. And then I can make the top, the third and final piece, which will be the fluted neck and lip. Going through the three steps, centering, applying pressure towards the middle, moving the clay, each time just barely touching the water, a little bit on there. And just like I want to drive the car, slowing down around the curve, speeding up in the straightaway, using my pedal for the speed. Now I measure that out and I know how far my base has to be out. And on this third section, I can go all the way to the wheel again, for I don't need a base, a bottom. Pull out with my fingers and then begin the lifting stage again. I know I make this look very easy after being, you know, a professional potter for so long. It is not really hard, but your repetition and your practice, which of course will make you better at this skill. People have been throwing pots for, as I've mentioned in some of these other clay talks, 6,000 years, maybe 7,000 years. The amphora that I'm working on today was crucial to the survival of the societies because all these amphoras would store their wine and liquid and oils and food, grain. They had these huge granary areas where there were thousands of beautiful amphoras stacked high with everything that the society would need to eat for the whole winter. Pretty happy with that. That would be more like the fluted top that we would use. I'd put those off to the side. And now because I threw yesterday, I'm able to bring in some forms that are already somewhat hardened but pretty much the same shape and I want to put these together for you now. When we have our ideas and our dreams they're often very big. We can all accomplish these dreams if we take them in little increments. We take everything down to pieces. We work hard and focused on those little parts. And then after a while, we put them together. We have our mountain. We've accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. Have a good strategy. Develop yourself a really good, strong strategy for working your technique. How do you accomplish things? How do you go about things? I don't know. OK, into the center as best I can. I'll seal that down to the wheel with some balls of clay. I'll use clay slip from the bucket that I've been throwing with like for glue. Wherever I'm going to connect two parts, I put glue and I score, rough up the surface with a fork or a stick. My second piece. We'll go on to the foot. If I've measured okay, again, I'll go through the same process, slip, scoring. Putting on. Now I can get this as balanced and as symmetric as I want, or I can get it as 
warped and off-centered as I want. That's my decision. That's my art. And every artist is different about that. A lot of potters really prefer that their pots look like they were made from a machine. Other potters don't want that. They want each one to look very original. That's going to be up to you. Once that's on there, good. I can either completely hide that seam or I can accentuate it. Now again, for the top, gonna probably have to stand up here. Uh-oh, I'm gonna get my exercise now. This is fun. I'm having fun. This is what we say to you in these clay talks all along. This is fun. This feels good. I'm playing. I'm healthy. I'm balanced. I'm not worrying about any result. I'm in the game. I'm in the process right now, the best place to be. Here's the top. I check that out just to see if it's going to fit. Take a look at it. Yeah, fits beautiful. And here out of just three small parts, I'm able to very quickly make this beautiful amphora. It's a great technique and even beginners can use it to make something they never thought they could make with their skill level. So you can beat your skill level in a way. You can outthink it by developing techniques that will work for you. Now I have a, a real nice M4 that's got a good size to it and I can really store a lot of stuff in there. And I'm looking at it and it just needs one other thing to me and I think that one other thing is two handles. So I'll grab a little bit of wet clay and as they've been doing for thousands of years, I'll pull a couple of handles. And that's just using a little bit of water and taking your hand and following it through down off the clay, which pulls it down and thins it out and begins to form that nice big grip that you need to carry these pots around. Always a good idea to score the area that you're going to attach anything to. Putting your handle on real steady, real secure. If you want one handle, put one handle on. If you want 15 handles on there, put 15 handles on there. Traditionally, there's two. And I guess I'll be a, a traditionalist today. Put two on. Follow through, go all the way down. Align it up with the other one. That's fun. I had fun doing that. I hope you had fun watching me. I want to thank Jan and Andrew for helping me out today. I want to thank you for being here today. And I can't wait to get back to you at the next Clay Talks. I'm Rodney Mott. See you next time.